Hello, you absolute legends. As we all know, earlier this month, video game cheater of the century Billy Mitchell settled his defamation lawsuit with the record-keeping organization Twin Galaxies. The settlement was honestly a bit weird. Billy kind of got his scores put back up to the Twin Galaxies website, but it was just a historical archive and wasn't actually the official leaderboards. Billy then used this to spread misinformation, claiming that his scores had been reinstated when they had not been. Billy's tactic of claiming victory seemed to work within the mainstream media media, with many articles proclaiming that his scores had been put back up to the ranks. Some even straight up said that Twin Galaxies now thought his scores were legitimate, even though the complete opposite is true. And at the center of this misinformation campaign was a university professor named Dr. Michael Zyder. In their statement, Twin Galaxies pointed directly to Zyder's expert opinion. According to Zyder, you can't prove Billy cheated because maybe Billy didn't clean his VCR before making copies of his world records. This isn't a joke by the way, he actually said this. Zyder's two-page expert testimony is as short as it is stupid. Zyder's statement is so dumb that it's very obvious he is just making things up in order to get a paycheck. I hear that expert witnesses get paid very well. I was planning on doing a video debunking all of his bogus claims, and we will definitely have a quick look at them to find out why they are so terrible. But when researching who Dr. Michael Zyder was, something very unexpected happened. I've encountered some weird rabbit holes before, but nothing prepared me for this. There is a good reason Dr. Zyder is so willing to lie for some quick cash. It seems like he might desperately need the money. And you won't believe why. I really hope you enjoy. Now Legends, it's a new year which means it's time for a new you. I think 2024 is the year you finally start taking good care of yourself and there is no better way than with Geology. Geology is the bee's knees when it comes to skin, hair and body care. All of their products are super high quality and trust me, people will notice a difference. Personally, my skin is super oily so I need to use Geology's everyday face wash or my face looks and feels gross. Whenever I stop washing, my wife can immediately tell. Plus, I use their nourishing eye cream because I have massive black eyes from not getting enough sleep. But if you have problems with acne or dry skin, Geology is perfect for that too. Plus, they have a whole range of products including body washes, deodorants, and hair shampoos and conditioners, and they all smell incredible. Geology makes things easy and is proven effective with over 7,000 five-star reviews. The process is super simple. Just take the 30-second quiz and Geology will send a personalized routine right to your door. And if you use my link in the description or scan the QR code and use code CarlJob70, Geology will give you 70% off their award-winning trial set, plus up to 30% off an extra product of your choice. This is a really good deal, and I know your partner will thank you, so don't miss out. Now before we talk about Zyder, I just want to quickly talk about my previous video, which was a response to a video released by Moon Channel. The owner of that channel, Mooney, watched my video and actually ended up agreeing with a lot of the things I said. He reached out to me privately to apologize and he also made a public apology. He also ended up removing his video entirely, which I understand, but was not something I wanted or expected. All I wanted to do was express myself, which I did. In response to my video, a lot of people took things too far, sending unwarranted harassment harassment and getting way too personal. I don't want to tell people what to do, but I wish I could just have a public disagreement with someone without an angry mob forming. Mooney had a bad take, realized he was wrong, apologized, and removed his video. This really isn't a big deal in the grand scheme of things. In my opinion, he acted very respectfully in the face of such a damning response video. I appreciate his actions, and yet many people were still not happy. Please do me a favor, go subscribe to his channel, check out some of his other videos, and this way we can all move forward in a positive way. Dr. Michael Zyder has been around for a long time. He has quite the storied history. It's obvious he has a very good amount of knowledge in his field, and he seems to be a very smart man, which makes his appointment as an expert for Billy Mitchell very strange. From Zyder's personal website, it seems like he is essentially a professional expert witness, someone who gets paid to be an expert in as many lawsuits as he can. In the case of Billy Mitchell, Zyder was hired by Billy's law firm Manning & Cass, and Zyder proudly displays this on his website. It's clear that Zyder wants and craves attention. He links to as many news articles as he can on his website, which now shows a bunch of articles about Billy's settlement. Zyder thinks very highly of himself and his opinion. On his Facebook page, on the day of the Twin Galaxies settlement, Zyder proudly proclaimed, I just got a call from an attorney I am working for, and she said that my last document has convinced the other side to settle. This case has been running since 2007, and there have been a large number of previous expert witnesses. My declaration is one page long. 
Nothing in this post is true. His statement didn't convince Twin Galaxies to settle, the case wasn't running since 2007, there weren't 20 expert witnesses, and his declaration isn't one page long. It's already obvious that Zyder shares at least one trait with Billy, a penchant for dishonesty. But if his statements were true, surely his declaration must be good, right? Well, let's take a look. Zyder's statement attempts to argue that Billy's tapes look like emulation because of some malfunction or other issue. I cannot stress enough that this statement has zero backing or evidence to support it. There is nothing of substance here. Zydar did no tests, no experiments, nothing. He's just making shit up and asserting it as fact. The entire thing has already been debunked extensively by Tanner Fokens, an electrical engineer and an expert in Donkey Kong. I will link his report in the description. But really, for most of this stuff, we don't need to be an engineer to know how ridiculous it is. Zyder makes this claim the converter Billy used changes the signal from 60 FPS to 30 FPS. However, the converter doesn't affect the frame rate whatsoever. Zyder doesn't even know what the converter does, and his entire point is flat out wrong because of this. For point B, he claims that component aging can cause issues and maybe Billy's board was so old that it acted weird. Aside from the fact this has never been demonstrated and again is just being pulled from Zyder's ass, we still have the exact same board Billy used. Yes, literally the very same board Billy used to achieve his records years ago still exists and has been tested many times in the past several years. It's working perfectly fine. So this entire point is utterly insane knowing that it can and has already been tested. For point C, Zyder claims that maybe when you copy a VHS tape, it can go from looking like this to looking like this. But only on that exact frame, at that specific time, many times over the course of several hours. This is akin to saying that it's possible to walk through a wall if your atoms line up just in the right way. He claims that not cleaning your VCR, or even recording on long play, will lower the quality, and thus all of the transition screens will now mimic MAME. Zyder is a very smart man. If even we, the mere uneducated public, can look at this expert opinion and instantly realize that it's complete nonsense, obviously Zyder realizes this too. And yet, he doesn't care. In fact, he is proud of his statement. He celebrates all of the publicity he is getting from it. Now, just from the simple fact he is so obviously willing to lie for money, I already believed Zyder to be a morally bankrupt man. But you have no idea how bad he really is. I wanted to know who Zyder was, so I went digging. Let's go all the way down the rabbit hole. Dr. Zyder is addicted to social media. On his Instagram account, he has almost 20,000 posts. His first post is July of 2016, so that works out to an average of seven posts per day every single day for the past eight years. He has many Facebook accounts, but on his main one and his personal one, they are both the same, with many posts every single day and thousands upon thousands upon thousands of photos. Most of the photos are of nothing in particular, but many of them are strange and creepy. Zyder will stand on the street at night and record people exercising through windows. He has uploaded many photos of him looking straight into the windows of his neighbors, and he will record and upload videos of desperate homeless people. It's really invasive and gross, but Twitter is where things got really weird. I first found this small account that appears to be Zyder trying to solicit sugar babies, offering to pay them $5,000 per week. However, this account only had a few followers, so I figured that maybe it was just someone else using his photos. I honestly didn't think anything of it. Then I found an account that was actually him. This is definitely Zyder. He states that he's a professor at USC, it links to his Instagram which is linked from his website, and it's been around since 2009. It's legit. When you look at his likes, you'll see that Dr. Zyder is a thirsty boy. Picks for everyone who interacts. Titty picks to everyone who likes. He likes a bunch of weird diaper fetish posts, and then we get into straight up hardcore BDSM and hardcore porn. This is the kind of stuff that makes even me blush. Now, don't get me wrong, there is absolutely nothing wrong with having a kink, but remember, this is Zyder on his work Twitter, as a USC professor, liking tweets of guys getting pegged. It's extremely unprofessional. Then we get into the accounts he follows. Some of them are what you would expect, other professors at USC or those in the same industry, but most of them are adult content creators or escorts. You'll see a lot of FMTY, which means fly me to you. It's women who allow men to to fly them into a city and pay money to spend time with them. Then I realized, if he is following all of these escort accounts on his main Twitter profile, then the other account where he was trying to solicit that exact same service is probably actually him. He just didn't want to do it on his main account. 
Now sure, Zyder is obsessed with social media, he's definitely creepy, he's extremely unprofessional and desperate, but is that really a problem? Personally, if I was a university, I wouldn't want my professors doing this kind of thing on their official Twitter account. Teachers and politicians have been lambasted for liking just a single raunchy post. Naturally, they claimed it was hackers, but Zyder can't really use that defense because he's been doing it for years. Also, personally, if I did have a daughter, I wouldn't want this guy anywhere near her in a position of power. I mean, if he is so desperate to do this on his work Twitter, then imagine what he is thinking around all of those young women at a university. I guess the real question is, is he just a perv online or does he actually pose a danger to students? Well, in March of 2023, Dr. Zyder was sued for sexual harassment by former USC student Lu Ning. This lawsuit is currently ongoing and the details aren't looking good at all. Ning claims that Zyder agreed to pay her $5,000 per week. That figure sounds familiar. Oh yes, it's the exact same amount Zyder's second Twitter account was offering to pay for sugar babies. Surely that's just a coincidence. Ning claims that she worked for and even lived with Zyda in his apartment. It states that during her employment, Michael Zyda deceived, abused, coerced, threatened, exploited, sexually harassed, and manipulated Ning, taking advantage of her immigration status and discriminating against her on the basis of her sex and mental disabilities. Throughout plaintiff's employment, she was subjected to inappropriate sexual advances and comments of a sexual nature. Defendant Michael Zyder would often comment on plaintiff's physical appearance, tell her that he loved her, asked her to move in with him, and insinuated that he wanted to have sex and children with her, among other advances and comments. Michael Zyder would make comments about plaintiff's weight, asking if plaintiff gained weight and how she expected to get a man if she gained weight. Michael Zyder would post photos and videos about the plaintiff without plaintiff's consent. Now this one, I immediately believe. During the time period of February 2020 to April 2020, plaintiff refused to massage defendant Michael Zyder. In response, he threatened to return her to China, evict her onto the street where she would be homeless, would play violent videos, inflict anxiety and panic attacks, causing attempted suicide and causing plaintiff to call 911. In July 2021, a lump was detected in the plaintiff's breast, and the plaintiff informed defendants to receive reimbursement for medical expenses and preparation for surgery. Defendant Michael Zyder texted in an act of sexual harassment, we will have to start calling you lumpy. And it goes on and on. What's even more sickening about this whole thing is that when USC found out about this, which they did last year, they immediately swept this under the rug and let Zyder quietly retire. I could find no acknowledgement of this from USC whatsoever, and Zyder is still listed as part of their faculty. I would love to know if they even bothered to ask Zyder's former students if they also encountered any similar behavior. Zyder seems like an all-round scumbag. He lies for money as an expert witness, he creeps on people and posts it to his social media, he uses his USC professor Twitter account to solicit nude pictures and follow escorts, and he's getting sued for sexual harassment by a former USC student. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Billy Mitchell's expert witness. Of course this is Billy's expert. Who else in their right mind would actually defend him? Of course, this is the expert that Billy's law firm Manning and Cass chose to work with. It all makes perfect sense. Dr. Zyder is a complete joke. And now I'm really curious what kind of opinion he has put forth in his other cases. If his statements regarding Billy's world records are anything to go by, they must be terrible. Zyder might be desperate for money, whether it's to pay his legal defense or to pay some young girl to spend time with him. In any case, I hope his career as an expert witness comes to an abrupt end because he is clearly making a mockery of the entire thing. Thank you so much for watching you legends, I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.